Fire one! <laughs> Regardless, here across from the Mages Guild is what I wanted to go show you earlier. This is Southern Books, where I go to edify my mind when I'm not soaking it. Hello? Oh, Burak Grubble, <laughs> you guys are going to love this, it's so funny, okay. Hello, sir. I would like to buy a book. Yeah, buy a goddamn book. <laughs> it's a bookstore, ain't it? <laughs> Don't just go peeking at them. Buy one! <laughs> I'm Buga Grubble, and I say you better buy a goddamn book. And right away, damn it. <laughs> what do you have to offer, my friend? Looking for some reading material? <laughs> Whoa! You've come to the right place. Anal fire nexuses. This is quite a good one, huh? Ah, shame it's a, a one-use scroll, yes. Darkest darkness, yes, many, many things. Hmm, manual of spellcraft, oh. Knights of the Nine. Varieties of Daedra. Interesting. I shall have a look well, around. Well. Yes, and you. Arcana restored. Always so many interesting books. The Lusty Argonian Maid. Hmm. Can I look at this one? I'm just going to touch. Hope it's okay. Certainly not, kind sir. I'm here but to clean your chambers. Is that all you've come for, little one? My chambers? I have no idea what it is you imply, master. I'm but a poor Argonian maid. So you are, my dumpling. And a good one at that. Such strong legs and a shapely tail. You embarrass me, sir. Fear not. You're always safe here with me. I must finish my cleaning, sir. The mistress will have my head if I do not. Cleaning, eh? I have something for you. Here! Polish my spear. <laughs> but it's huge. <laughs> it could take me all night. Plenty of time, my sweet. Plenty of time. <laughs> oh, I should like to find the rest of those books. The Lusty Argonian Maid. What is this? Hmm. I was hoping for volume number or something. But it seems it is not numeric. Hmm. Surely some treasures upstairs. Hmm. This is the varieties of Daedra books. Fundamentals of alchemy. Yes. Mixed unit tactics we have read. Hmm. I'm sure there's much to be learned here, Tamrielic lore. Let us see. The following are notes I have gathered over the past centuries of items of unimaginable significance. All have been seen, owned, and lost again and again throughout Tamriel. Some may be myth, others may be hoax, but regardless, many have lost their lives attempting to find or protect these very coveted items. Lord's Mail. Sometimes called the Ar Armor of Morahouse or the Gift of Kinnereth, this is an ancient curious of unsurpassable quality. It grants the wearer power to absorb health, resist the effects of spells, and cure oneself of poison when it is used. It is said that wherever Kinnereth deigns the wearer unworthy, the Lord's Mail will be taken away and hidden for the next chosen one. Ebony Mail. The Ebony Mail is a breastplate created before recorded history by the dark Elvis elven goddess Both. Boethia. It is she who determines who should possess the ebony mail and for how long a time. If judged worthy, its power grants the wearer added resistance of fire, magicka, and grants a magical shield. It is Boethia alone who determines when a person is ineligible to bear the ebony mail any longer, and the goddess can be very capricious. Spellbreaker. Spellbreaker, superficially a Dwemer tower shield, is one of the most ancient relics of Tamriel. Aside from its historical importance in the Battle of Rurikorn Shalador, the Spellbreaker protects its wielder from almost completely, almost completely from any spellcaster, either by reflecting magics or silencing any mage about to cast a spell. It is said that Spellbreaker still searches for its original owner and will not remain the property of anyone else for long. For most, possessing Spellbreaker for any length of time is power enough. Chrysomir, the Paladin's Blade, is an ancient claymore with offensive capabilities surpassed only by its own defenses. It lends the wielder health, protects him or her from fire, and reflects any spells cast against the wielder back at the caster. 
Seldom has the Chrysomere been wielded by any bladesman for any length of time, for it chooses not to favor one champion. Staff of Magnus. The Staff of Magnus, one of the elder artifacts of Tamria, was a metaphysical battery of sorts for its creator, Magnus. When used, it absorbs an enemy's health and mystical energy. In time, the Staff will abandon the mage who wields it before he becomes too powerful and upsets the mystical balance that it is sworn to protect. The Warlock's Ring. The Warlock's Ring of the Archmage Cirabane is one of the most popular relics in myth and fable. In Tamriel's ancient history, Cirabane saved all of the continent by judicious use of this ring, and ever since, it has helped adventurers with less lofty goals. It is best known for its ability to reflect spells cast at the wearer and to improve his or her speed and to restore health. No adventurer can wear the Warlock's Ring for long. It is said to, that the Ring of Cirabane that the ring is Seer Bane's alone to command. The Ring of Finister was made hundreds of years ago by a man who needed good defenses to survive his adventurous life. Thanks to the ring, Finister lived for hundreds of years, and since then, it has passed from person to person. The ring improves its wearer's overall resistance to poison, magicka, and shock. Still, Finister was cunning and cursed the ring so that it eventually disappears from its holder's possession and returns to another resting place. Discontent to stay anywhere, but with Finister himself. Oh, Ring of Khajiit! Mm. Brandar does not know of this. The Ring of Khajiit is an ancient relic hundreds of years older than Rajin, the thief that made the ring famous. It was Rajin who used the ring's powers to make himself invisible as quick as the breath of wind. Using the ring, he became the most successful burger in Elsewhere's history. Rajin's eventual fate is a mystery, but according to the legend, the ring rebelled against such constant use and disappeared, leaving Rajin helpless before his enemies. I did talk about this briefly in Morrowind. He is the, uh, the prince of thieves, as it were. He ascended to somewhat of a demigod status due to his use of this ring, apparently. I thought he was just a, a great Khajiit, so it comes as a bit of a disappointment. Still... Perhaps I shall forget about it. <laughs> the Mace of Molag Ball, also known as the Vampire's Mace. The Mace of Molag Mal drains its victims of magicka and gives it to the bearer. It also has the ability to transfer any enemy strength to its wielder. Molag Ball has been quite free with his artifact. There are many legends about the mace. It seems to be a favorite for vanquishing wizards. Mask of Clavicus Vile. Ever the vain one, Clavicus Vile made a mask suited to his own personality. The bearer of the mask is more likely to get a positive response from the people of Tamriel. The higher his personality, the larger the bonus. The best known story of the mask tells the tale of Avalia, a, young, a noblewoman of some renown. As a young girl, she was grossly disfigured by a spiteful servant. Avalia made a dark deal with Clavicus Vile and received the mask in return. Though the mask did not change her looks, suddenly she had the respect and admiration of everyone. A year and a day after her marriage to a well-connected Baird, Clavicus Vile reclaimed the mask. Although pregnant with, with child, Avalia was banished from the Baron's household. Twenty-one years and one day later, Avalia's daughter claimed her vengeance by slaying the Baron. Oh my... It's quite a mask, and what what is what has become of Clavicus Vile? Hmm. So much things. Wow. Maroon's Razor. The Dark Brotherhood has coveted this ebony dagger for generations. This mythical artifact is capable of slaying any creature instantly. History does not record any bearers of Mar Mar Maroon's Razor. Probably because they were absorbed by Sithis, hmm? However, the Dark Brotherhood was once decimated by a vicious internal power struggle. It is suspected that the Razor was involved. Curious of the Savior's Hide Another of Hircine's artifacts was the Curious of the Savior's Hide. The Curious has the special ability to resist Magicka. Legend has it that the Hircine rewarded his peeled hide to the first and only mortal to have ever escaped his hunting grounds. This unknown mortal had the hide tailored into this magical curious for his future adventures. The savior's hide has a tendency to travel from hero to hero as though it might have a mind of its own. Spear of Bitter Mercy. One of the more mysterious artifacts is the Spear of Bitter Mercy. Little to nothing is known about the spear. There are no recorded histories, but many believe it to be of Daedric origin. The only known legend about it is in its use by a mighty hero during the fall of the Battlespire. Battlespire. 
The hero was aided by the spear in the defeat of Merun's Dagon, but the recapturing of the battle and the ba recapturing of the battle spire. Since that time, the spear of bitter mercy has made few appearances within Tamriel. Daedric Scourge. The Daedric Scourge is a mighty mace forged from sacred em ebony in the fires of Fickledire. The legendary weapon of Bacan, it was once a fierce weapon used to send spirits of black back into oblivion. The, the weapon has the ability to summon creatures from oblivion, once a tool used against the Daedric Lords in the Battle's Fire. It now roams the land with adventurers. Hmm. Perhaps this is a way to close oblivion. Bow of Shadows. Legend has it that the Bow of Shadows was forged by the Daedra Nocturnal. The legendary ranger, Rayless Guile, was granted the bow for a secret mission that failed, and the bow was lost. Rayless did not go down without a hearty fight, and it is said to, a, to have, with the aid of his bow, taken scores of his fro foes with him. The bow grants the user the ability of invisibility and increased speed. Many sightings of the Bow of Shadow have been reported, and it is even said that the sinister Dark Elf Assassin of the Second Era, Dram, once wielded this bow. Fists of Randagulf. Randagulf of Clan Begolin goes down in Tamrielic history as one of the mightiest warriors known from Skyrim. He was once known for, for his courage and ferocity in battle and was a factor in many battles. He finally met his fate when King Harold conquered Skyrim. King Harold respected this great hero and took Randagulf's gauntlets for his own. After King Harold died, the gauntlets disappeared. The king claimed that the fist granted the bearer added strength. Iceblade of the Monarch. The Iceblade of the Monarch is truly one of Tamriel's most prized artifacts. Legend has it that the evil Archmage Almio Selmo enchanted the claymore of a great warrior with the soul of a Frost Monarch, a stronger form of the more common Frost Atronarch. The warrior, Thurgarasi, was to play a part in the assassination of the great king in a far-off land and become the new leader. The assassination failed, however, and the Archmage was imprisoned. The Iceblade freezes all who feel its blade. The blade circulates from owner to owner, never settling in one place for long. Hmm, seems we have a theme here. Wing of, Ring of Surroundings. Little is known of this prize, but it is said that it lends the ability the wearer to blend in with their surroundings. Boots of the Apostle are a true mystery. The wearer of the boots is rumored to be able to levitate, though nobody has ever seen them used. The Mentor's Ring is a prized possession for any apprentice to magic. It lends the wearer the ability to increase their intelligence and wisdom, thus making their use of a magic more efficient. The High Wizard Carney Asron is said to have been the creator of the ring. It was a construct for his young apprentices while studying under his guidance. After Asron's death, the ring and several other possessions van vanished and have been circulated throughout Tamriel. Ring of the Winds! No facts are known about this ring, but the title and few rumors lend one to think it grants the wearer added speed. Vampiric Ring! One of the more deadly and rare artifacts in Tamriel is the Vampiric Ring. It is said that the ring has the power to steal its victim's health and grant it to the wearer. The exact nature and origin of the ring is wholly unknown, but many elders speak of its evil creation in Morrowind long ago by a cult of vampire followers. The Vampiric Ring is an extremely rare artifact and is only seen every few hundreds of moons. Eldion's Ward. Eldion was a holy knight of legend in Breton history. <clears throat> he, was so he was a sought-after man for his courage and determination to set all wrongs right. In one story, it said he rescued a baron's daughter from sure death at the hands of an evil warlord. For his reward, the Baron spent all his riches to have an enchanted shield built for Eldion. The shield granted Eldion the uh, opportunity to heal his wounds. Staff of Hasidoki. Hasidoki was said to have been a very competitive wizard. He wandered the land in search of a wizard who was greater than he. To the best of all knowledge, he never found a wizard who could meet up to his challenge. It is said that he felt so lonely and isolated because so many feared his power that he bonded his life force into his very own staff, where his soul remains to this very day. Magic users all over Tamriel have been searching for this magical staff, granting its wielder a protection of magicka. It is a sure prize for any magic user. Bloodworm Helm. The King of Worms was said to have left behind one of his prized possessions, the Bloodworm Helm. The helm is a construct of magically formed bone. The helm allows the user to summon skeletons and control the undead. It would be a prized artifact to a necromancer. Dragon Bone Mail. This curious is one of the greatest artifacts any collector or hero could own. Didn't I have some of that? <laughs> 
It is constructed by real dragon bone and was enchanted by the first Imperial Battle Mage Zurin Arctis. Well, I don't have that one. In the early years of the Third Era, it is a truly exquisite piece of work, and many have sought to possess it. The properties of the curious allow the the wearer to resist fire and to damage an enemy with a blast of fire. Little is known about the involvement of Zurich Arctis with the enchantment of the curious, but an old tale speaks of a debt that he owed to a traveling warrior. Like the warrior, the dragonbone male never stays at, never stays put for long. Skull Crusher. The Skull Crusher is an amaz amazingly large and powerful weapon. The Warhammer was created in a fire magically fueled by the wizard Dora Gusel and was forged by the great weaponsmith Hilbongard Rolimus. The steel is magically hardened and the weight of the weapon is amazingly light, which makes for more powerful swings and deadly blows. The Warhammer was to be put on display for a festival, but thieves got it first. The Skull Crusher still travels Tamriel in search of its creators. Gold brand. This magical sword is almost a complete mystery. Thieves tell tales about its golden make and how it was accidentally forged, actually forged by ancient dragons of the north. How do you ac accidentally forge a sword, hmm? Their tales claim that it was given to a great knight who was sworn to protect the dragons. The sword lends its wielder the ability to do fire damage on an enemy. Gold brand has not been cited in recent history and is said to be awaiting a worthy hero. Fang of Haynectam. Namet. Oh, I hope I don't have to say that again. <laughs> Black Marsh was once known to be inhabited with what the Argonians called the Wasmus. Northern men considered them to be intelligent dragons with lightning for blood. One such mighty beast, Hyanagmanet, was, sl was slain by the northern men, though it took seven days and nights and a score of men. Of the surviving men, one took a fang home as a trophy. The fang was carved down into a blade and fashioned into a small dagger. The dagger mysteriously houses some of the beast's magical properties and grants the user the ability to do shock damage on an opponent. This unique dagger is seen occasionally by traveling heroes. Umbrasword. Umbrasword was an... An... The Umbrasword was enchanted by the ancient witch Nair Ware. Nanre? Ware? Nanre Ware? And its sole purpose was the entrapment of souls. Used in conjunction with a soul gem, the sword allows the wielder the opportunity to imprison an enemy's soul into the gem. Nainra was executed for her evil creation, but not before she was able to hide the sword. The Ember Sword is very choosy when it comes to owners, and therefore remains hidden until a worthy one is found. Denskimer's Ring All that is known of this ring is that it may grant the user protection from certain elements. Even the name Denskimer is a mis mystery. It sure is. Helm of Orin Bearclaw. One of Valenwood's legendary heroes is Orin Bearclaw, son of King Faum Todai. He was a respected clan hunter and a future leader. Wood Elf legends claim Orin single-handedly defeated Gwen Halafana, the witch serpent of the Elven Wood, forever bringing peace to his clan. Orin would go on to accomplish many numerous other deeds, eventually losing his life to the Katen Flu. His helm stood as a monument of his stature for future generations to remember. The helm was lost eventually, as the clan split, and it is now a treasured artifact for hunters. The helm of Orin Bearclaw is rumored to improve the wearer's agility and endurance. Daedric Crescent Blade Probably the most rare and even outlawed item of the great prizes is the Daedric Crescent Blade. The blade was once used by Mayrun's Dagons, Ma Daedric forces in the capture of the Imperial Battle Spire. These extremely unique blades were gathered up and destroyed after the battle spire was recaptured by the Empire. All but one, it seems. Though the Empire believes them all to be destroyed, it is rumored that one still remains in existence somewhere in Tamriel, though none have ever seen it. The blade lends its wearer the ability to do great damage on an enemy and allows him to paralyze and put heavy wear on his enemy's armor. Quite the prize for any mighty warrior. If it does indeed exist. Oh my... There are so many treasures. That is quite a bit of Tamrielic lore, I tell you, friends. I hope you did enjoy that as much as I did. Quite a, a great thing to think about, all the... the mad items that are floating around here. Hmm. Oh, yes. Perhaps I shall make some alchemical uh, ingredients and bid goodbye my friend Bugak. Goodbye Bugak Robo!
Goodbye! You're going to sleep now. Oh, yeah. Maybe so, hmm? He doesn't trust me at all. Can't we be friends? I'm going to go back here, okay? Goodbye! Doopy doopy doo! Oh no. Oh shit. Okay, do this one. Ah! I don't waste it on chest. Surely we have something better, hmm? Easy locks, easy locks. Yes. Goodbye. Oh, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> get get goodbye. Ah, <laughs> uh, I only fun with him because he is he is so ill-tempered. You see, quite a good time we had. Yes. One, two, three, four. Goodbye, goodbye. See you again. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye, see you, my friends.